Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC20 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we are still using the Weezing Glissapod team that we featured from yesterday's episode. We're actually up against an opposing Weezing. Our opponent was really high ranked as well, so this should be a fun one. Of course, this is a rental team, so feel free to try it out yourselves. The code is in the description below. Thanks to DMATS for providing it, and let's jump into today's episode. Okay, they have a really interesting team. They have, like, Weezing, Charizard, Rillaboom, Excadrill, Clef. Um, hmm. Clef Pult is always scary. Curious what the item on Dragapult is. I would assume Life Orb here, because you don't have a great way to activate Weakness Policy. Um. Honestly, Galissapod looks very good here, if we can get Trick Room up. But... One thing I have to respect is the Clef Excadrill lead, which can just go for, you know, helping hand Phantasm into Dusclops, and that would be pretty bad. Hmm. One lead I'm actually thinking of Incineroar and Weezing. Clef Pult looks really tough here in general, actually, the more I think about it. Yeah, but if I go Incineroar, uh, no, I was gonna say Incineroar Dust Clouds, but you can still just Helping Hand uh, Phantasm, but I could Ally Switch turn one. I'm gonna go with the standard mode of this team, which is Incineroar Dust Clouds, Weezing Galissapod, I think. We'll try it out. Our opponent is a really cool team, I think Clefpult is the likely lead from their end, so let's see. Um, but... This is funny because the question of the day I had written for today is what Gen 8 Pokemon do you think is underused because I think like Weezing is super underplayed and I think like my opponent actually has two of the underplayed Pokemon in my opinion which is both Weezing and Rillaboom so really cool to see that on my opponent's team. Let me know in the comments below and as always if you guys enjoy Road Rank, please share support by leaving a like. I'd really appreciate it. It indeed is Clef Pult which was pretty much what I was expecting. Still doesn't make this any easier though. Um... Yeah this is still really tricky. Uh, because I think my opponent's just going to go for a Helping Hand Phantasm. Is it Life Orb? Yep. Helping Hand Phantasm into Dusclops. So, like, one way I can get around that is Ally Switch. I need to sell out the Dynamax, basically, to win this game, and then set up Trick Room, but it's easier said than done. I think you always Helping Hand Phantasm into Dusclops here, honestly. I'd be very shocked if there's any other play. Um, it's just, do I go for damage? Do I go for a parting shot? Yeah, I guess I'll parting shot. And ally switch turn one. Uh, maybe bringing my Dragapult would have been the correct move here, too. I don't know how I beat Clef Pult, like, easily with this team. Because it just exerts so much offensive presence immediately, we don't have redirection, so... Like, I could go with my Dragapult, gamble with the speed ties, but I don't really like that too much. Because we'll just faint to Helping Hand Phantasm. And without redirection, there's no way around Helping Hand Phantasm, basically. Yep, so there's Helping Hand, no surprise there. I don't know, I mean, I could have switched Dusclops into Weezing, Parting Shotted, but I think Helping Hand Phantasm might just, I mean, it should just KO the Weezing, too, so. Maybe we max Weezing. Yep. So much damage. It was not very effective attack, and it still did 50%. <laughs> yeah, by parting shotting, I at least burn a turn of Dynamax and get some pivoting out here. Um, it's still just so tricky, though. I guess, like, Excadrill would have been maybe a better lead, where I could, like, just KO Clefairy turn one, but I don't have anything to pressure both of these at once. Uh, Weezing or Galispot? I guess Weezing. Yeah. Basically, what I'm trying to do right now is stall out um, Dynamax, and then once I stall out Dynamax, I can get up Trick Room with Dusclop. So I think my play here is probably to switch the Dusclops out into Incineroar. Could even max Weezing, like I said, but I really, really wanted to max Galissapod in this game. So I think that's what I'm going for. I think they have to respect Trick Room, though, right? So they just Helping Hand Phantasm here again. The problem, like, protecting Weezing is just the safer play. Actually, Helping Hand Phantasm would just KO Incineroar, right? I could go for another crazy ally switch play. Well, nothing in my team is taking Helping Hand Phantasm at this point, actually, so... Yeah, I guess I'll go into Incineroar and just go for a... Sludge Bomb. I mean, you have to target Dusclops here, I think. You have to respect it. You could read the switch, I guess. 
Maybe my opponent does make the read. Okay, helping hand again. Shame and Cinderella takes over 50% there. Yeah, Phantasm. Yep, okay. Can we survive? That would be so clutch. And we do survive! Let's go, Incineroar! Let's go! Oh, that's huge. That is super good for us. Because that, what this, this is so good for so many reasons. Because now, uh, not only do I get my berry, I get the sludge bomb off. Uh, but it also means that I don't have to switch in one of Dusclops or the um, Galissapod. Okay. Nice. I think I just protect Weezing here, honestly. Get the safe switch in into the... Um... I mean, I'd want to conserve Incineroar, but I think Elisapod and uh, Dusclops are definitely more important. So here I'm just going to go for a parting shot onto Dragapult and protect Weezing. There's a decent chance you just KO the Incineroar here, but I'd, I'd rather play it safe. No need to make some aggressive predictions here. Yeah. And Parting Shot works onto Dragapult here because of uh, Weezing canceling Clear Body. Okay, so we've done what I needed to do early game, which was thought out the Dynamax. Now I'm assuming that that's Physical Pull if it's special. I mean, even a special Helping Hand, Life Orb, Shadow Ball shouldn't KO the um, Dusclops, I don't think. Yeah, so I'm going to Protect here. It's a pretty obvious Protect, so I think there's a decent chance Incineroar goes down here. But like I said, I don't really mind that. But it goes into Weezing, perfect. Alright, uh, we've stalled out Dragapult's Dynamax very effectively, but... It's still far from over, obviously. That being said, Dragapult's in a really tough spot now. There might be Heal Pulse coming out from Clef, or maybe just the Moonblast. Let's see. Either way, I get the Parting Shot off. So Dragapult's relatively useless now, which means... I, I do have to respect after you, Uncle Fairy, as well, but... This is how you stall out Dynamax on Dragapult's end. Okay, so we get Dusclops in finally safely. So in the end, we took around, what, like, 60% on Incineroar to stall out Dynamax, which I think is totally worth it. Thunder Wave, okay. Well, we have to play around Paralysis, which is scary, but I'll take it. Okay, we are not in a bad spot at all right now. We're in pretty good shape. And we even get to conserve Incineroar, which is really nice, because uh, there's a decent chance there's a Rillaboom in the back, or Excadrill. So I think I'm definitely going to try to Trick Room here. And... Yeah, I mean, now that Dragapult is at minus one and it's not maxed, like... I think Trick Rooming is fine, and just going for another Sludge Bomb onto the Clefairy. Because I think Dragapult might want to even switch out here. Yep, exactly. That's Excadrill, okay. Oh, he's Protect as well, interesting. Okay, so Protect, uh, Helping Hand, Thunder Wave. Let's see if we get Trick Room up here. Nice, okay, that's very good. Uh, what I can do now is bring in the Incineroar. I want to conserve Weezing because it beats Clef and Excadrill super hard by itself. Sorry, Clef and Dragapult super hard by itself. So I want to just Nightshade into the Clef and switch out into Incineroar here. Weezing might go down to a ground type attack, but I don't really mind that. Uh, I really want the Intimidate here. Protect uh, to save my opponent there. I'm really curious what the Clef, uh, last attack on Clef is. Like after you is sometimes run to beat Trick Room. We've seen Thunder Wave, Moonblast, sorry, not Moonblast, Thunder Wave Protect, and, uh, I mean, it's gotta be Follow Me, right? Yeah. Thunder, Thunder Wave Protect, Follow Me, Helping Hand makes the most sense. Clef even switches out into Dragapult, so that's even better. Nice. So now we're in a great spot because we're, we are commanding a lot of offense, surprisingly, with Excadrill, should Excadrill survive the turn, but if Excadrill faints, that's also fine. I get Galissapod in for free. And it's Life Orb. Yeah, okay, wait, sorry, we already saw that. Um, Sash on the Drill. Night Chain onto Exodrill might have been better than just the Break of Sash there. Curious if Exodrill protects here. If it protects, my opponent's in a lot of trouble, I think. Um, even if it's a ground type attack, though, I get the free switch into Galissapod. Okay, they didn't protect. Yeah, so I wish I kind of Nightshaded the Exodrill there, but whatever. Yep, high horsepower into Insane. Okay, that's fine. Insane did its job. Uh, it might be Galissapod time now, then. Might be Galissapod time now. I think so. I think we have to. Okay. So, our trusty bug is out. Question is, I might not want to Dynamax immediately. I mean, here's the thing. I could switch out into Weezing. Actually, I like that, right? Switch out into Weezing and Max Geyser into Excadrill. Alternatively, I mean, I could just double up onto Excadrill right now with, like, Nightshade and, um, 
liquidation. But I also think there's a decent chance Weezing protects here. Or sorry, um, that the X control protects. I think you want to switch it out, honestly. Okay, I'm actually going to Nightshade and just Liquidation into the Dragapult here. Yep. Clef, maybe? No, that's our last Pokemon. Rillaboom? Okay. Dragapult doesn't protect, which is very good. Oh, hopefully this KOs. I don't know if it does. <laughs> Come on, Glissopod, show me what you can do. Beautiful. This game's kind of crazy where I feel like I've played nearly perfectly, but I still don't feel like I'm close to winning yet, which is very scary. Um, Excadrill makes this end game pretty tough still, but yeah. I think you have to bring out Clef here, right? Yeah, giving up the Incineroar means my Excadrill matchup is a little shakier. Clef comes out, yep. Okay. Uh, surely it's going to be follow me as the last attack. Like, what I want to do is honestly switch out into Weezing right now. I also have to be aware of how many Trick Room turns I have. I only have two turns left, which is scary. That's actually very scary. Um, Because I want to max Galissapod here. Actually, I don't think I need to switch out. I think I can stay in. Like, I want a Nightshade into Rillaboom. It's just whether I Flutterby, because Flutter, like, Flutterby should KO Galissapod, or just Geyser into the Clef. Oh, I ended up Geysering into Rillaboom. No, that was a misclick. Oh, I hope I didn't just throw it off that. Whoops. The, the play is to flutter by the Rillaboom or Geyser. I mean, unless Clef just goes for the safe follow me here, but I think they're always protecting and attacking with Rillaboom. Protecting Clef and attacking with Rillaboom. Or just T-waving with... I guess they get Helping Hand here as well. That's not a possibility. Uh, but Geyser into... Let's see. Follow me. Yeah, they protected. Okay, well, I wanted to go for the Geyser, so at least actually I got more out of this turn, which is free damage onto Rillaboom, but um, Flutterby would have just probably ended the game right here. That being said, we do set up the Rain. This still does a fair amount, I would think. Ah, uh, though Friend Guard is up, so probably not that much. Not bad. That's actually not bad damage, I gotta say. Oh, uh, that was a crit. That was why. Okay. My opponent doesn't have a great way to deny us second Trick Room, but they might boot out my Galissapod. Oh, they're Leech Seed. Okay. They're definitely not booting us out then. Lefties. Yeah. Should have Flutter by. But I guess I got more out of that turn, actually, theoretically, since I ended up trying to target Clef. But I think Clef is almost always protecting there, so Flutter by would have just been better on my end. I think here they go for Follow Me. So I think I actually switch out into Weezing here. And KO the Clef. We actually have to remember that I have Life Orb Aqua Jet as well, which actually does a fair amount of damage to the Excadrill. So, like, what I'm going for here is basically setting up another Trick Room. Because we have, um... Wide guard as well. Once Galissapod is not in max form, we can actually just wide guard to end this game, I think. And now the rain is up, so we're definitely KOing the Clef. Um, okay. You should follow. Oh, they didn't follow me. Wow. Although I don't mind KOing Clefairy because I don't like my opponent having redirection support for the X girl, so I'm fine KOing it here. Honestly, should my opponent get rid of. Actually, no, I can't emergency exit anymore because Weezing's out. Um, I was going to say that would be pretty cool. Okay, they're going to Leech Seed onto. Glissapod, yep. I mean, there's nothing stopping me from, from just protecting and geysering into Excadrill here, right? That's pretty safe. You can't boot me out. I don't... I, I'm, Glissapod should definitely survive like a rock slide plus another attack. So I think that's the safest play, yeah. Because this Weez, uh, this Rillaboom is not going to do anything to us in this endgame. This is a really intense game. A really fun one at that, though. I'll be sad if I lose this, though, because I honestly feel like I've played pretty well. There's also a chance that my opponent just protects the Excadrill, but even if they protect, we do so much damage with my Max Geyser and Rain. I don't know, Flutterby is safer into Rillaboom here. And then it's a 3v1. He has high horsepower as well, as we've seen. Um, I'm definitely protecting Weezing here, I just don't know whether to Flutterby or to just Geyser into Excadrill. I think it's a geyser in text control, though. I don't think this we uh, this Rillaboom is relevant enough for me to target it. 
Because it's just Leaf Seeding. That's not going to win in the end game against the Bulky Weezing and Dust Clops. So I just need damage on Slid. Uh, and even if, the thing is, even if Extra Girl protects, it still takes, what, like 50% with Life Orb, Geyser, and Rain? Okay, he's not protecting. That should be game then, unless somehow um, we're getting KO'd here. Nice. Beautiful. Uh, wow, he doubled up onto the Weezing. Okay, that's a surprising play. But we get a huge Max Geyser off. This brings it down to Focus Ash, and now I'm pretty sure we can just Aqua Jet Sludge Bomb to end this game. We didn't even need to set up another Trick Room. Nice. Glissopod was so good, but like I said, we needed to conserve it for the late game, which was what I was going for. Okay. I'm really surprised they didn't. he didn't double up onto the uh, Glissopod there. Because I don't think I'm ever protecting with Glissopod. Like, we're bulky enough where I can take attacks, right? Uh, since we have Shadow Sneak, I think we're actually safe to just Aqua Jet. Even if, like, Woodhammer one-shots Galissapod, uh, we have Shadow Sneak to just KO Excadrill anyway. And Rillaboom hard loses to Weezing, so I think Sludge Bomb Aqua Jet here is pretty safe. This was an insane fun game. Yeah, um, Excadrill is also high horsepower. Protects the Rillaboom. Nice. So did I protect this whole time? Interesting. But Aqua Jet comes out. This Aqua Jet's been so clutch yesterday and today. Um, yeah, it's just so helpful there. Nice. Okay, this game was really scary. I don't know. Like, we end up winning decent, like, pretty convincingly in the end. But I felt like Excadrill was just such a big threat. Mainly because of how much pressure exerts with high horsepower into the um, Weezing. But we were able to stall out the Dragapult Dynamax effectively. Like, I thought Clef Pult was a really tough lead to go up against. And knew I had to make some plays to try to get into it. But ended up working out. Um, yeah, so not bad. I think here, I mean, there's no way you can really win. I'd love to see a Leech Life go off. So I'm just going to Sludge Bomb. I mean, there's no way Rillaboom wins 3v1. And I've never, I don't think I've seen, Le ah, have I seen Leech Life's animation in this game? Right, my opponent just forfeits. Okay, not bad. All right, we are up against our next team of the day. And we're going up against a very hardcore Sun team here with Charizard Torkoal. This is where uh, Weezing could come in huge just to deny the weather setups. I don't mind Galissapod here, but we do get undersped by a bunch of things, right? So, like, I could go Dusclops, Dragapult, but that, like, I think with this team, you almost always lead Indidi plus Dusclops, maybe Vileplume. Vileplume's cool. Vi both Vileplume and Tor- or, oh, sorry, um, Gigalith are really cool to see here. So I'm excited to see what sets are uh, on those Pokemon. Um... If you lead Indidi and Hat... There's no hat. I mean, Dusclops. Uh, my Dusclops is useless other than to reverse. But, like, what I could go for is it just the KO? I don't know. I'm thinking of, like, leading Incineroar plus du uh, Dusclops. I guess Sash Drill feels really good here, doesn't it? Because I can Rock Fall. Quake. But then, I'm going to go Weezing Galissapod. I think Excadrill is actually probably the right Pokemon to bring here, but it's tough because if I if Trick Room is up, the Excadrill is really useless. Uh, I guess not necessarily because it does decently against the Gigalith. So I'm expecting my opponent to lead like Indidi and uh, Dusclops here with right not right here, uh, Gigalith and maybe Torkoal in the back. Okay, so, yep, went for the leads they expected. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think I KO with Throw Chop, right? Because what I want to do is just, like, reverse my opponent's Trick Room immediately. Ah, uh, this is still really tricky, isn't it? Do you even follow me here? Do you just hard switch the NDD out? Figgy and Evil Light, as we know, and they have... Light Clay! Oh, boy. So he's definitely setting up screens here, turn one. Maybe that's okay. I um, think I'm just going to Throat Chop. And Nightshade. Hmm. Okay, I'll take that. That's a free Nightshade. Maybe they're expecting me to Trick Room there. Reflect, okay. It's also not a Sand Rush. Or Sandstream Gigalith, interesting. Right, the good thing is that Dusclops gets guaranteed damage with Nightshade, doesn't care about Reflect or anything, so that's nice. 
Okay, I'm gonna parting shot here then, I think. Do you max the Gigalith? I think there's a decent chance you max- I think, like, you could go for follow me and max. So I get an ally switch, and parting shot gives me a free switch in, and then I can just swap the Incineroar back out for another Intimidate. That could work. I, I yeah, I didn't expect that turn one play, but I think my opponent was expecting me to reverse their Trick Room, so they just made a super proactive play, um, which I think made a lot of sense. But I was like, I don't care if Trick Room goes up that first turn, because you don't have any offensive pressure out on the field anyway, right? So let's see. Galissapod looks pretty solid right now. It's just that I have to worry about Gigalith, but if I can get an Intimidate off, it's probably a weakness policy Gigalith as well. So confirming that would be good. Yeah. He's gonna max. Okay, yeah. I mean, to get a max out this early on is good, especially if they're not fo using follow me here. I think you should follow me, because what else would you even go for? Uh, I guess like Psychic. Or you could set up light screen as well, but it's not like this team has many special attackers to begin with. This is also part of the reason where maybe I should have brought an Excadrill. Let's see, follow me. Yeah. So that's fine. Uh, I want a parting shot here anyway to get the free switch out. So this is like a really passive turn, right? Ally switch parting shot like doesn't do any damage, but I think it's worth it because now I can uh, cycle back in and for another intimidate. I don't think you're ever rock falling into Incineroar here, right? I could just go hard out into Galissapod. I mean, whatever I bring out is going to switch back out into Incineroar anyway, right? So I guess I go Weezing. Yeah, and in the chance that my opponent did target the Dusclop slot. Yeah. Okay. Quakes. That's fine. Yeah, into Weezing. Or sorry, into Dusclops. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, now what we can do is just switch out into Incineroar again. I mean, we're kind of doing what we did in that first game, which is we stall out our opponent's Dynamax and then make the most use out of our Dynamax. I kind of want to just ally switch again, like ally switch and then switch Weezing out into Incineroar. Because I don't really have a better play, quite frankly, to go with with Dusclops. Um, all I'm doing is stalling out my opponent's Max right now. I'm not going to really do much damage with Weezing anyway. Okay, he actually swaps out the NDD into Dusclops. Okay, it's fine by me. The main thing is that it's already two turns of max over, although they could uh, bulldoze stuff, so I still have to be very careful. Should be bulldoze as well. Okay. Yep, he's policy. Yeah, the dynamic of like a trip room matchup like this is just so weird. <laughs> okay. I'm glad we got some initial damage off with Nightshade though. Uh, just going for a Nightshade ourselves there would have been better. Like, Nightshading into Dusclops would have worked out better. There's Rockfall, yep. Nice, okay, so my opponent read it this time around. Well done on their end. I don't mind that too much, though. Like, honestly, it's fine. They also might not have even read it, and they're like, I just want to KO the Dusclops, which would make sense. But, I'm alright with that. It's their last turn of Dynamax here. What do you do? You probably Trick Room this time around, right? I honestly want to predate their Trick Room, reverse the Trick Room, and then get the free switch in into, um, into Galissapod. I guess the problem is also that screens are up, right? That's not good for us. Like, throw chopping, for sure. I think if I want to win this game, I need to make sure Trick Room doesn't go up. So, I'm going to predict that they Trick Room here. Uh, this this is an aggressive prediction, though. If they don't Trick Room and they just Nightshade, I think we might just lose the game off that. Because then you can just Bulldoze us the subsequent turn. Parting Shot into the Gigalith also might have been better there. Yeah. Not bad damage. Okay, they Rockfall. That's fine. On to Incineroar. What I was hoping for was that, yeah, Rockfall, you KO the Incineroar, I get the free switch in into... Glissopod. Okay, nice. I called that correctly. Good. That's really good, because now what I can do is actually just go for um, Max Water and Nightshade. Oh, do I go for that, actually? Maybe just Liquidation? I mean, I have to bring out Glissopod here, I think. The problem is I don't want to eat up a Rock Slide. But I also don't want to get emergency exited. 
If I just ma- uh, maybe it's- No, I don't- I mean, I think Nightshade Liquidation KOs Dusclops- I actually, I'm, I'm not confident on that. I'm not confident enough on that. A geyser itself isn't KOing though. I think I need to double up onto Dusclops here. I might get forced out, which obviously sucks. I'm hoping that they just protect with the uh, Gigalith. But even if we get forced out, I honestly don't think it's the worst case scenario because regular Galissapod, like we'll have the rain up and regular Galissapod still can kind of just sweep through everything that my opponent has. So yeah, I'm, go I'm, make I'm go making this play. I maybe Rock Slide doesn't, no, does it do enough? I feel like it would. Ah, they protect it. That's so good. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Be Unless they're pain splitting here, which I guess is a possibility, but pretty sure Max Geyser and Nightshade should pick up the KO here, I hope. Yeah, that's enough. That is very, very good for us. These matchups have been so tricky, man. Okay, please don't pain split here. Nice. Yeah, I think it had to trick him. Okay, so that's out of the way now. We know there's uh, Reflect up, but Rain is up. Now I could actually switch out my Dusclops into Weezing to make sure Galissapod doesn't get forced out either. Dynamax Galissapod is so scary. Like, it looks so scary. I, I hate bugs, and it'd be like a nightmare to see one of these in person. Okay, Indeedee's out. Surge goes back up, that's fine. I think the play is to just swap Dusclops out here. And KO the NDD. Yeah, that seems fine to me. I mean, does it follow me here, actually? That's the other question. Follow me and Rock Slide? Because, like, what I want to do is... Sh you could switch out into Torkoal if you have that, I guess. Uh, I guess NDD is never really putting on that much pressure, so I'm going to Geyser into the um, Gigalith, because we know Protected, and switch out into Weezing here. I think that's fine. We have to be careful, though, because this NDD actually... Like, Dusclops doesn't touch the NDD. So if I want to KO it, I actually have to use Glissapod or Weezing. Like the Psychics actually hurt, right? Okay, gas is out. Oh, he goes. Well, that's not it. I guess they forgot that they set up a Reflect already. Okay. Kaiser comes out. Nice. Dude, let's go Glissapod. Let's go. One thing though I've been doing with this team is I think because you don't have much offense with Incineroar, Dusclops, or Weezing, I'm always stalling out Dynamax by playing super passively early game, which is kind of different from a lot of the teams that we've used. So kind of shows you a different play style, which is interesting. It's Torkoal's the last one, which is perfect to see. Um, they don't even get the sun up, which is great. So with that, I can just go for a Geyser. I mean, this thing has screens. I think Geysering the... Is there a, ever a reason... To Geyser. I mean, Weezing's... Yeah, Torkoal's not doing any damage, so I think it's fine to just Sludge Bomb and Geyser into Hat. Or NDD. Yeah. Wow, nice. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Really, really solid game with Galissapod there. I'm happy about that. Cool. I think um, Hard Trick Room... <laughs> We're getting DC'd here? Let's see. Uh, hard Trick Room... Yeah. <laughs> Hard Trick Room relies on uh, having Trick Room up, right? So in this game, we were able to deny Trick Room by first forcing them out and second, um, reversing their Trick Room, which is pretty cool. But I'll play a third game with this team today. It's been super fun, and I'm glad we got two really good Galissapod games in because yesterday, like, Galissapod doesn't want to come out in every matchup, but, like, the matchups it does want to come out in, it's super, super good in. So, yeah, let's uh, find a third match for the day. All right, we're going to find our third opponent of the day, and oh my god, there's a Pikachu, there is a Serena, there is a Darmanitan. Huh. I'm gonna be honest, Galissapod looks amazing here if we get Trick Room up, but we have to worry about Taunt Serena. Holy, this team is like, it's like hyper offensive, it's so frail, but it's so scary at the same time. Like, I think my opponent really has to respect Trick Room enough here, so like, I think I counter that by going with like, and non-Trick Room-y stuff. Like, I could just go Dusclops Dragapult, honestly. Uh, otherwise I'd go like Incineroar or Dusclops, but the problem is if it's Queenly Majesty, Serena, and it has Taunt. I just get Taunted, and what do I do? Cry. Although I actually could Ally Switch Flare Blitz to get around that. But I don't want to be too dependent on Ally Switch. Oh, you know what I could do? Lead Incin Dusclops, have Weezing in the- just switch in Weezing? And then have Galissapod as the last one. 
That seems to work. Alright. Well, I'm going to bring Galissa Pod to all the games today. So, let's see. Uh, definitely an interesting team for my opponent's end, I think. Pikachu's scary. Serena's scary. I mean, it's just so much offense, right? Like, Dracovich, Pikachu, uh, Darmanitan. Those are, like, some of the frailest Pokemon you can use in this metagame. And my opponent has all of them. It's Pikachu Whimsicott. I mean, how do they stop Trick Room here? I can literally just fake out in Trick Room, right? I think their only counterplay to that is getting a Paralysis onto Dusclop, so I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to go for here. You get Helping Hand, Max Lightning, or G-Max Stunshock. Not Stunshock, sorry. Uh, Sash, Lightball, yeah. Oh, gosh. I thought about Dragapult here, and it honestly might have worked. The odds are not in my opponent's favor right now, let me tell you that. If they don't get a Paralysis turn 1, I think we honestly just win the game, because their team is so offensive, I do not see how they beat a team under Trick Room. Like, their whole goal is to deny Trick Room from being set up, and I'm... Uh, oh, that works. <laughs> they got Taunt. Okay, yeah. Well played. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I was so hard set on Pikachu maxing there. Um, that was a very blatant misplay. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, okay. That's fine. I'm going to Parting Shot and Nightshade here. Yeah, nice play by my opponent. That's how they beat Trick Room. Uh, what's my counterplay to that? What is my counterplay to that? Could I ally switch turn one just so that I don't get taunted onto the Dust Club slot? It's so funny, like, because of all the other times we played Pikachu and it just maxed immediately, I literally just discounted the fact of it maxing and going for, uh, an attack turn one. Or sorry, going for fake out turn one. I wonder if it's helping hand here. Uh, oh, this double might just KO Incineroar. We might get swept by Pikachu. Oh, he's geysering! That's definitely enough to KO us. <laughs> I think Pikachu's finally going to have its revenge. I just played that turn one really poorly. <laughs> nice. Honestly, I can't... I, I, I respect. Respect to my opponent. Yeah, I also just discounted allies. Oh, sorry, uh, Geyser. I'm not wheezing. Part of me wants to max wheezing. But that seems pretty crazy. I mean, I have to stall out Dynamax, right? So I'm going to protect and just uh, Nightshade. Because we could still win this with Dynamax Galissapod under Trick Room. That's what I'm thinking. This Protect is pretty obvious, though. So they could just go, like, Helping Hand, Max uh, Pikachu into Dusclops. Or do that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, Dragapult was the correct route in this game, I think. Is that one shot? Oh my god. Pikachu, I know you wanted your revenge, but you didn't need to go this hard on me, dude. You're gonna end this game in like five minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I made such a boneheaded play turn one. I don't know why I was hearts. It, although, as we saw, Helping had Max just KOs Dusclops anyway, so my opponent also could have just gone for that, and that would have dunked on me. I did not respect the Pikachu enough, and for that, I am sorry. You target Galissapod, right? No, I mean, Weezy protected last turn, so that's the correct target, but I could max Galissapod. Oh, jeez. Uh, here's how we need to win. We need to max Galissapod, guard, and confuse Pikachu. Alternatively, my opponent can just hard read and target Weezing. I got wrecked in this game. Hey, at least we got to max Galissapod, but... Uh, I really slept on Whimsicott Pikachu. It's funny because, like, Fake Out, Fake Tears, that's all, like, common stuff on the Pikachu as well, right? Or, or, sorry, on Whimsicott and Pikachu, but... Yeah, turn one, I was just like, we're good here. Although, the fact that G-Max, uh, can just KO... Wait, I mean, there's Fake Tears support, so, yeah, I'm not surprised I KO Dusclops, but... I mean, yeah. Uh, I guess Fake Tears is the same prio as Fake Out, so... Oh my god. <laughs> I got destroyed by Pikachu! <laughs> Okay, you know what? I'll allow it for all those Pikachus that we've taken out in our day. We got 4 owed. I don't, we're not even going to do any damage other than one Nightshade. Oh my god. But I think it, this is a good example because I've been going the same mode as the last couple of games, and it goes to show how if 
how how good hyper offense can just sweep through. Like you need absolutely need to get the trick room setup going, basically. I also just didn't consider Geyser, so I thought the Incinera would be fine. I thought I'd get the party shot off, and I thought that would be fine, but this game deteriorated very rapidly. Props to you, Pikachu. You know what? Well done, sir. <laughs> we got swept so hard by fake tears, Pikachu, here. <laughs> but I think it was a fun one. I, I mean, I obviously made a mistake on turn one. Oh, he's Thunderbolt. Yeah, GG. <laughs> oh, man. I... In games like this, like where you get completely swept, you have to ask yourself like what or what went wrong. And so turn one went wrong, turn two went wrong because I didn't consider the geyser. Plus I didn't expect the fake tears and uh, stun shocks to just, I keep calling it stun shocks, sorry, Volt Crash uh, to just KO Dusclops. But if I were to redo that game, the original lead that I wanted to go with, which was Dusclops and Dragapult, I think would have been fine because Pikachu doesn't match up well into Dragapult. And so we could have... I think the right approach is Dusclops Dragable because what that does is put on enough pressure early game where you want a Tailwind to outspeed the Dragapult and you don't want- so you might not necessarily deny my Trick Room, but then because your attention is focused on the Dragapult, that allows me to sweep with Weezing and uh, Galissapod in the back. I think in a best of three, definitely would not make those same mistakes again, but very well played by my opponent. I mean, they played perfectly basically, like, the entire game. They did every turn, and there was not a single thing they could have done differently, so hats out to them, man. That was that was really impressive. Um, so Galissapod, unfortunately, has a, uh, a slight- you know, bump in the road in this last game today, but uh, I think it's good to highlight, you know, like, a loss like that, for example, shows that with this, this strategy, when I go with this bulky strategy, I am super, super reliant on setting up Trick Room, and normally I'm able to call, like, the like the ways to deny Trick Room pretty well in turn one, but for some reason I just brain farted in this game, forgot about the combination of, like, Fake Out and Taunt, which was obviously, like, super, super obvious. So, even if I were to go with the same Pokemon that I did, I think, like, I could have just gone for an Ally Switch turn one, and then we have the mind games of whether to Ally Switch turn two or not, but then, uh, you know, Whimsicott, instead of spending a turn going for Moonblast or Fake Tears, has to go for a Taunt, pretty much. Um, I guess in that position, they could have gone for Fake Tears and uh, Crash into uh, Dusclops. So, I think, even though uh, I misplayed turn 1, I think the, the lead matchup was actually just really bad on my end, and I should have gone with the Dragapult route in this game. Uh, the reason I was scared of it was mainly because of, like, Darmanitan, but the thing is that uh, with Max, we should survive an attack from Darmanitan anyway, so like we could go for Shadow Sneak, uh, Wormwind, or Phantasm, and then go for a Trick Room of our own. So, yeah, uh, definitely the wrong Pokemon uh, selection there in Team Preview, so made some mistakes in Team Preview. Obviously, misplayed the first two turns, and it was pretty much uh, GG after that, but yeah, uh, Pikachu finally has his revenge. We had our revenge of Pikachu a couple of episodes ago, so it strikes back again, so looking forward to settling the score with it in a future episode. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you for watching. As always, if you enjoyed, please share your support by leaving a like, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, peace.